our voices and worship God. If you have followed the drama, you would have understood that what happened seemed impossible. Worship him, the God who rose again for you and I. Because if he had remained in the grave, he could not justify our faith. Brethren, worship him, exalt his name. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the, the, the unchangeable Lord. He's the eternal God. He's the rock of ages. Worship him. He's the captain of our salvation. Worship him. Exalt his name. The ancient of days, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's our soon coming king again. Worship him. Exalt his name. We worship you, Lord. We exalt your name. We honor you, Baba. We adore you. We we'll lift you high. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Blessed Holy Spirit. We say thank you. We welcome your presence. We hand over everything that shall be done here today into your hands. Take control and let the name of the Lord alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, as I was praying, the Lord reminded me that today is the 31st of March, the last day of the first quarter of the year. And coincidentally, or God incidentally, it is also Easter Day, the day we commemorate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are going to pray. We are going to thank God for all he has done between January 1 and March 31. And then we'll declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ over the next quarter. Because a new quarter is starting. Resurrection is bringing a new beginning. Okay? So we are going to pray. We say, Father, we thank you for what you have done before. Uh -uh, you don't sound like you're happy. At least you are alive. Father, we thank you for what you have done for us from the beginning of the year till now. As we go into a new quarter on a resurrection day, Father, we declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ over this day and over the next quarter and the rest of the year in Jesus' name. Pray now, pray. Begin to declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Baba, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. You are taking us into a new season. You are about to do new things for us. And you are starting it, Father, by, by letting us witness Resurrection Sunday. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, as we go into your word this morning, we ask that you will speak to us. Lord, we pray that you will give us an understanding of what has happened and that your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Please be seated. I want to thank God very much for the play that was just shown. I did not know exactly what. Pastor was just telling me we are going to do a play before you preach. And I said, praise God. And the play is like the introduction to what I'm about to say. You all saw how Jesus was arrested and how he was crucified. Yes, it's, it's our own earthly way of showing it. But if you really look at it with the eye of a Christian, you'll almost cry. That he went through all of that for you and I. And when the Romans uh, uh, crucified him, they thought, hey, hey, that's the end. Ah, ah, we're tired of this man. Ah, all of these stories that he's telling us about one God somewhere that we don't know. Suddenly, he rose again. Suddenly, some power that they did not know raised him 
and the world has not been the same since then. What we want to discuss today is the benefits of his resurrection. The benefits of his resurrection. What do we stand to gain by his being raised from the dead? And my text is Matthew 28 verses 1 to 7. Matthew 28, 1 to 7, which was the key thing they showed. Matthew 28, verses 1 to 7. You should have found it by now. And if you haven't found it, the Click Click people have found it for you on media, so you can follow. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary <clears throat> to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that you seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Exactly what they dramatized. They saw it here. So I don't need to go into the drama. As we know, this is the account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He, raised, he was raised on the first day of the week. Which is why um, we now worship, we worship God on Sunday, the first day of the week. God had given to the Jews the Sabbath. That was a Saturday. But because he rose on the first day of the week, that transformed our day of worship to the first day of the week. Two days prior to that, he was crucified and buried. You saw the drama. And his disciples and all who had come to believe in him were now very sorrowful. They were disappointed that the one they thought would free them from Roman rule was not the one himself who was killed. Ah. Saturday, they were in deep mourning. There was silence over the land. Because he was still thinking, ah, this man has just died. The one that was teaching us so many things we've never known before. People were dead, was being raised while he was here. Blind were seen. Lame was were walking. Lepers were being healed. Suddenly they killed him. How did he allow himself to be killed? We don't understand this man. Look at it. You cannot understand, can you? You wonder, ah, ah, he did miracles. And yet he could not allow them to stop taking him. They took him away. They killed him. <laughs> And that was a thing that we just witnessed. And then they saw the darkness that came upon the earth when he passed. And the thundering and the lightning. And they wonder if that could happen, what kind of person he is. Then Sunday came. The first day of the week. And so women said, okay, Sabbath is over. Let us please go and embalm his body. Let's give him a decent burial. They just shoved him into the, into the sepulcher and rolled a stone. Let's at least go. Then suddenly they got there and they found he's not here. The natural question is who took him away? Where did they take his body? It was unimaginable because it was a big stone. Even the women were saying, we must find somebody to roll away the stone. It was unimaginable. It was unbelievable, but it was true because when they found this, the, the stone rolled away, they found an empty tomb. So it is true he's not there. He had risen. They gave the grave was empty. And then the Marys, the, the, the women saw him. Mary Magdalene was the first to see him. And she went and told everybody else. They saw him. And that is why you and I celebrate Easter Sunday. It is in commemoration of his resurrection. Easter Sunday we are celebrating also we can eat uh, Easter eggs. And eat uh, 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 whatever it is that they eat on Easter. They've turned him into an Easter egg. No. Easter is the day we commemorate his resurrection. And that is why the Lord says to tell you what is the benefit. Why are we celebrating Easter? Do, have we not eaten enough eggs since the beginning of the year? No, that's not why. What does it mean to us? What are the benefits? The first thing that it means is that the God we are serving is a God who is alive. Many other faiths. Let me just say many. I can't say everyone because I don't say, I can't say I know everyone. Their father and the Lord, or the one through whom they go to their God, is dead. They can show you his grave. If many have erected uh, 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 big empires around the graves, and they go there and worship. But the God we serve, if you go and visit Israel today, they'll take you to the grave, but it's empty. It is completely empty. 
that justifies our faith. That shows us that we are believing in a God who is alive. From generation to generation, there is no faith that can come and tell you that the God in whom they believe, the one through whom God, Jesus, God says that we must go to him, Jesus Christ, there is no other faith that can say he's alive. The God you and I are serving is he's alive. It's he's alive. He is alive. Jesus Christ is alive. Now, the next thing we learn is because he's alive, because he rose again, it means he can intervene in your circumstances. Is it, a, is it a dead dog or a dead human being that's going to intervene in your circumstance? Somebody who is alive, when you cry, can see you crying. When you groan, can see you groaning or hear you groaning. He can speak to you. Because he is alive, he can intervene in your situation. He sees, he knows, he understands. It doesn't matter what you are going through right now. Because he is alive, he is able to intervene in your situation. He can bear your burden with you. He understands your pains and your joys. Which is why in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. The Bible says, let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The, the, only, thing, the only person who cannot leave you or forsake is somebody who is alive. Any other person is just a picture. You will go away and the picture remains where? You come back and find the picture where you left it. Jesus said, I will never leave you. Why? Because he's alive. And he will be there with you wherever you are. Wherever you are, whatever circumstance, whatever situation. He is alive. He can intervene in your situation. He can speak to you. He can give you wisdom. He can give you direction. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. Isaiah 30 21. You shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it, whether you walk to the left or to the right. Why? Because he's alive. So he will speak to you by his spirit. The third thing is that because Jesus rose again, the same power that rose him from the dead. Remember Jesus was man on the earth. Two hands, two legs, one head, two eyes, one nose, one mouth, just like you and I. The same power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is available for you. In Romans chapter 8 verse 11, in Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the Bible says, But if the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. To quicken means to give life. You're feeling discouraged. You're feeling depressed. You're feeling weak. He can give you life. The same power that raised him from the dead, not another power. The same power is available for you because he rose. If that same power is of magic, I'm sure you heard in the place, somebody said, is it magic? That is a natural question to ask when it happened. Which kind of magic is this? No, it's the power of the Holy Ghost that God sent. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead can quicken your mortal body. It will give life to you. It means it can heal you. If there's any part of your body that is no longer functioning well, he will quicken it. He will give life to it. He can repair whatever may have been damaged in your body. If the power can raise him from the dead, bring him out or from behind a, a, a big stone that had been rolled. Roll away the stone. That power, is it malaria you have that you think that power cannot remove? He will quicken your mortal body. That is why God had said ahead. In Jeremiah 32 verse 27. Jeremiah 32 verse 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Nothing is too hard. If his power could have raised Jesus from the dead, that same power can quicken your body. That same power can quicken your brain. That same power can do anything that you need. Anything that is keeping you down, that is keeping you weak, that is keeping you unable. That same power that raised him. Because the worst that can happen to somebody is death. Remember they had drained his blood. Remember they had broken his legs. Do you remember? They had put a crown of thorns with thorns on his head that had pierced his head. It raised him back as a human being. That when the only thing was a scars. And God allowed the scars to remain to prove that it's Jesus and not somebody else. That's why the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1, 11, it's this same Jesus, not another one. That is why Jesus told his disciples when he appeared, see my hands, see my legs, it is me. It is me, drained of the blood, drained of everything, but Jesus was raised again by a power. The next thing 
The fourth thing you need to know, because Jesus rose again, hope was restored to his disciples. So hope will be restored to you. His disciples had lost hope. For the three and a half years he was ministering, they were encouraged. They were dancing with him when he danced. They were hungry with him when he was hungry. They were in the boat when the enemy wanted to capsize the boat. They, they, they did life with him. The good, the bad, and the ugly of it, they did it with him. But suddenly, this person who seemed so powerful on earth suddenly became powerless before an enemy. They lost hope. I'm sure some of them would have wiped their eyes, their eyes washed their eyes and said, am I seeing right? Is this the same person who the lame would come to and will walk? Is this the same person who the blind will come to? What has happened? They lost hope. They lost hope. In, verse, uh, in Matthew chapter 16, verses, Mark, Mark 16, verses 9 to 11. Mark chapter 16, verses 9 to 11. Now, when Jesus was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him, as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, they believed not. They still did not have any hope. They were still mourning, and they did not at first believe the news. Then Luke 24, 51 to 53. Luke 24, 51 to 53. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising and blessing of their hope was restored. Because Jesus rose, whatever you had lost hope on will be restored. Amen. The same power that raised him from the dead will restore your hope. Amen. There are things you have been looking for and it seems like it's taking long. Receive your restoration of hope today in Jesus' name. There are things that you had, you were so sure of and it turned out the wrong way or it turned out a different way. <laughs> Receive restoration. Receive restoration. Jesus Christ rose again. You see, when we were in university, you know, really born again, that song, He's Alive, because I saw many of you did not know it. That was one of the songs we used to sing. He's alive, amen. But let's sing it together. He's. Whatever key you take, I will sing. He's alive, amen. He's alive, amen. He's alive, Jesus is alive, forever he's alive, amen, he's alive, amen, he's alive, Jesus is alive. your hope be restored. Amen. The fifth thing we find is that since Jesus rose again, everything that had died in your life will receive resurrection. Amen. As I said, remember they pierced his side. They had to pierce his side because his blood had to flow so that the blood would cover over our sins. They nailed him. He had to die on the cross. Why? Because that is the only death. He had to die carrying the sins of the world on his head. He died because of you and I, because of our sins. So he had to die a horrible death. But on resurrection day, a power came that brought that broken body back to life. Anything that has died in your life because Jesus rose will receive resurrection. You remember there's an example in Ezekiel 37. The story is in verses 1 to 10. We won't read it. Ezekiel chapter 37, yes. verses 1 to 10. When God took prophet Ezekiel to a valley of dry bones. And the Bible says they were very dry. It means they have been dead for a long time. The bones had scattered all over the place. Can these bones live? <laughs> God, me, I don't know. It's only you who knows. Okay, I will tell you what to do. Prophesy. And he began to prophesy. And as he was prophesying, bones were traveling. Maybe somebody's bones had reached, some of it was in Rosebank. Some of the road of the bones was in the Rudeport. 
Some of it was in Santon. God made sure because they, they said they heard a loud noise and bones were coming to bones. Then, uh, these are just, this is a skeleton. Okay, prophesy now. Flesh came upon them. And okay, we just have dead people. Prophesy again to the four winds. And breath came into them and they became a living being. God was doing all of that in advance to let us know it is possible. So whatever it is, I prophesy by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is that had died in your life, it begins to receive life now. Fresh life in Jesus' name. All the dreams you had given up on because it looked like it's not happening. Those dreams will come back to life because Jesus Christ rose again. I prophesy that destinies that have been truncated, you had started walking and the enemies gagged up and you are stagnated by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Every, trust, every stagnation is removed and your destiny is restored in the name of Jesus. You have been taking exams. You've not been passing. By the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree that every dead brain shall come to life now in Jesus' name. Suddenly you face your exams. You face your studies and you find that you understand in the name of Jesus Christ. Dead wombs, I prophesy to you, receive life. Receive life. Dead wombs. If Jesus could be raised from the dead, he had a broken body. He rose up from the dead, able to walk, able to talk, able to eat. Ah, I decree all dead wombs. I say receive life now in Jesus name. Because he rose, anything dead would come back to life. The, the next thing we learn, the number 16. Because he rose, every impossibility in your life will be made possible. It was impossible. When Lazarus died, his body was not broken. He, he died of a sickness. So his body was intact. Jesus raised that body. When uh, 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 Jairus' daughter was sick, she was sick and then she died. Jesus raised that body. Jesus' body was broken. His blood was drained. Nails were put in his legs and in his hands. Everything that could go wrong had gone wrong. And yet he was raised back whole. It was an impossibility. But since the power that raised him from the dead made it possible, that same power that raised him is able to turn and is going to turn every possibility in your life to become possible. Amen. Whatever it is that they had said, it cannot happen in your life. It will begin to happen now in the name of Jesus. You just have to believe it. The disciples did not believe it, but God overrode their own faith. And they saw a living Jesus. They still could not believe it. They had to touch his... The Bible, they, they were not overacting. That's the truth. The Bible said he had to show them, this is my hand, this is my leg. It's me. It's not, um, it's not a ghost. It is me. And just before he left them, he ate with them to let them know that it's me. Here we are eating. Fish and bread I brought for you. Let's eat. It is me. That was an impossibility. That is why God said to us in Luke chapter 1 verse 37. Luke 1 37. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Absolutely nothing. For as long as God made it that the power of the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead, he's already given us a precedent. He turned the impossible to be possible. He's already given us a precedent. So all you need to do is the power that raised Jesus from the dead, raise whatever it is that is dead. The seventh thing we learn, by rising again, Jesus fulfilled the purpose. He was already God in heaven with God. But there was a purpose, there was a bigger picture that God wanted fulfilled. And that was for man to be saved. When God created us, he created us for fellowship. But the very thing he said we shouldn't do is what we did. People will say, it's Adam and Eve. If it was you, you'll do exactly the same thing. We're the offsprings. So, the eight, sin came into the world because they were the prototype. And when something goes wrong with the prototype, everything that comes off the assembly line carries that thing until the manufacturer withdraws it and does it again. So, and it was that process of re, re, re withdrawing and doing again was sending Jesus to the earth to live like us, to be born like us, and not to sin. And then carry our, our sin as if he was the one who sinned. That was the manufacturer's plan. But for it to actually be fulfilled, he had to go through what he did. He had to die and had to rise again. So by rising again, Jesus fulfilled the purpose. He completed the purpose. So because he completed his own assignment on earth, the power that raised him from the dead will enable you to, to complete the purpose he has for you. 
Because that power could raise him up. Uh -uh. That same power is available to enable you complete purpose. You too will fulfill destiny. Yeah. Jesus spoke it and it came to pass as unbelievable as it was. When they were looking for him, in Luke chapter 24 verse 6, Luke 24 verse 6, the, the angel, the man who answered them said, he is not here but his reason. Remember how he spoke to you when he was in Galilee, meaning he had prophesied it. What you are seeing is a, a, a fulfillment of the prophecy. So every prophetic word over your life that came from the Lord himself, the same power that raised up Jesus will bring it to pass in the name yeah. of Jesus. You will fulfill destiny. Everything that it looks like is taking long for it to be fulfilled in your life, it will be fulfilled. The three days that the disciples had to wait until Jesus rose the third day, it seemed like a long time. It seemed like an eternity. But it happened. Jesus rose. They got their Jesus back. We got our Jesus back. Amen. So the same death, the same power that raised him from the dead will help us to fulfill every design assignment that God had given to us. The eighth thing we learned, the rising of Jesus was a fulfillment of prophecy. It was also the completion of purpose. However, it was a completion of purpose that confounded people. Please note, I had said before it was a fulfillment of prophecy, so prophecy over your life will be fulfilled. It was a completion of purpose. Purpose over your life will be fulfilled. I'm not repeating myself. I'm saying that uh, despite that, the thing itself confounded people. It confounded people. How could it be? It is not happening. By the same token, the fulfillment of your destiny is going to confound people. Amen. People are going to ask, how did you do it? How was she able to achieve it? How was she able to achieve it? Which way did she pass that we didn't know? We couldn't have stopped her. Which way did he take that we didn't know? We couldn't have stopped him. They asked the same question. How did it happen? No, it's his disciples. They stole his body away. They couldn't imagine it. That is what God is saying for you. He said that he will so work in your life, Amen. it will confound people. Amen. People will be surprised. but They will be shocked that is this the same person. You yourself will look at yourself and say, is this me? Yes. And the Lord will say, yes, it's you. Just as he confounded the world with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he's going to confound the world with the fulfillment of destiny in your life. The prophetic words over you will come to pass. Amen. He's going to so empower you to do things that you yourself did not believe possible. Amen. And the world will say, is this the same person? And you say, here am I. Touch me. It's not another person. Neither is it a ghost. Luke 24, verses 10 to 12. Luke 24, 10 to 12. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran into the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. That is how people will wonder over you. That is how they wonder over you. How did this thing come to pass? Where were we? Uh -uh. I mean, Jimon, I thought I told you I give you that assignment. I don't know how it happened though. One power made her do it. Amen. One power made him do it. Amen. Somehow I just found that he had done it. And I raced after and I couldn't catch. That will be your story in the Amen. name of Jesus. I tried. I couldn't catch. They will not see your rear light. Amen. You know, it's only when you can see the rear light of the car. You see the distance, the direction is going. When they don't see your rear light, they won't know which way you've gone. Next thing they will hear is what God is doing in your life. The ninth thing, because we are looking at the benefits. When the women went to the tomb of Jesus, they were asked, why are you seeking the living among the dead? Brethren, I'm going to spend a little time here because the Lord did not let me sleep. Right from as I was reading the scriptures, this scripture kept coming. Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? As I said before, what is it? So when I woke up in the middle of the night, I had to add it to what I was doing. <laughs> the resurrection of Jesus means you must decide which side you are on. They came in looking for a dead body. Did you hear me? The women came in looking for a dead body. But Jesus had changed his address. He was no longer dead. He had risen. 
the light had shone. The earthquake had happened. The stone had been rolled away. Luke 24, verses 4 and 5. Luke 24, 4 and 5. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? So in other words, the Lord wants us. <coughs> what he's saying is you must rise above a life of sin. We must not be looking for the living among the dead. And who are the dead? Not just the, the tombs, not just the graveside. It is those who have not made Jesus their Lord and Savior. That's number one. And then those who say they've made him their Lord and Savior, they've only made him their Savior to, to feel, well, at least let me just take this other one. But they've not made him Lord over their lives. They are still being found in the congregation of the dead. They are still being found doing things that they shouldn't do. Why are we looking for the living among the dead? If you are truly living, we should find you among the living. If the person wants to remain dead, let them remain dead. Why are we live, looking for the living among the dead? The difference between anyone who says he's a Christian, it must be clear. It must be clear. You should not be comfortable among the dead. You should not be comfortable among unbelievers. We are there to minister to them. We are not saying that we are better than them. No. In our workplaces, we can't drive them away. But the difference must be clear. They must know that you are different. They may decide not to promote you when the time of God comes. If it's your boss that will be sacked. Or somebody who will go and leave. When it's time for God, he will do it. And nobody can do anything about it. When it was God's time, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And nobody, Pilate, none of them, none of them could do anything about it. So they told lies. Don't mind them. It's his disciples who stole away his body. What are this body that is walking around? Did they steal it away? I don't know. That is very serious to God. And then when I was doing my open heavens early this morning, I said, ah, see, oh. That was exactly what it was talking about. It is very serious. He did not let me sleep all of yesterday and, to, and through the night. Why are we looking for the living among the dead? Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. The Bible says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And he giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Is it because of a position you want? Or is it because of certain perquisites you want to enjoy? Is it because you want to be able to live so that they don't call you a Jesus freak? No, no, let me not shine. Let me not show why. Are you looking for the living among the dead? If you are living, let us know you are alive. If you want to stay in the congregation of the dead, we don't want you to stay there. So we want you to surrender to Jesus. Which brings me to my last point. There is still room for you. It doesn't matter what you have been doing. Even if you want us to believe you are living. Yes, I remember that day. I answered the altar call. If I, Pastor, you are the one who preached. That's not the point. Are you living among the living? Or you are living among the dead? That was the first question they asked the women. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And the Lord did not let that thing leave me. As I kept reading all the different, uh, you know, uh, accounts of the resurrection of Jesus, this thing kept going. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And that is for us for today. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? They must not be looking for you and find you in the congregation of the dead. What kind of things are you doing behind the scenes? You want us to believe you are a Christian. You want us to believe you are living. What has the power of his resurrection done for you that you are ready to stand for him? What light are you shining where you are? Is it because of promotion? Eh, no, if I do this now, they won't promote me. <laughs> what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And you see, there's a method by which we take to do this our business. And then, you know, uh, <laughs> let me now, after I've made the money, then I will serve, I will give money for the church. I'll even build church. In fact, I will build church in my father's village. That is not what God is looking for. And I want you to know it's a very serious question. But I also want you to know it does not matter where you are. It does not matter what has happened in your life. One thing Jesus did 
When he died, the Bible says he went to hell. He was carrying your sins and my sins. He had to go to hell. And let me read for you what the Bible told us he did. Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, kneeling it to the cross, and leading it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Easter day was the day he made a show of principalities and powers. He did not have any sin of his own. He was carrying your sins and my sins. And he went into hell because of those sins. But because he didn't have any sin, he fought principalities and powers. He made a public show by rising, say, hey, here I am. I've risen. I've risen. You no longer have any power over me. Therefore, because he rose, principalities and powers should not have any power over you. If they try it, you've got to be able with confidence to say, get out in the name of Jesus. And if whatever it is that you've been involved in is not giving you the confidence to say, get out in the name of Jesus, we can pray for you today. We can pray for you today. This is a new beginning. We can pray for you today and God will bring about the change. He rose again on the third day, having justified us. He rose again on the third day, having crucified, having, having destroyed principalities and powers. My brother, my sister, I want to ask you today, is your heart truly with Jesus? Or you just come to church so we can see you in church? What are you, why are you looking for the living among the dead? I want to believe that you are not dead. And that even if you were spiritually dead, you will come back to life today. Let us pray. Because there are still one or two more prayers we are going to pray. Let us pray. Let's be in an attitude. Let us stand up, please. Let us stand up. Please examine your life. Jesus Christ rose for every one of us. And the power of resurrection is able to turn the impossible to possible. The blood that he shed on Calvary is still viable as if the blood is just dripping now. Whatever the sin is, I want you to know that there is no sin that is too bad that Jesus cannot forgive. No. There is no sin. The Bible says to us in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, and all is all. So while we're in an attitude of prayer, I want to plead with you in the name of Jesus Christ, because there's also a wind that is blowing. There's also a wind that is blowing. If you are here this morning, and you don't remember the day or the hour, when you invited Jesus Christ into your heart, when you gave him the lordship of your life, and you want to do so today, I want you to know he will forgive your sins, whatever it may be. Please, if you are here, you want to surrender, let me just see your hand up. All I want to do is to pray for you. I'm not going to ask you what went wrong. And don't wait for the first person who will put up his hand or her hand. You want to surrender to Jesus this morning. I don't want us to look for the living among the dead. If you want to give your life to Jesus, please just raise up your hand. All I want is to pray for you. And if you had given your life to him before, but you know something went wrong, and you want to rededicate your life, I want you to know Jesus is not condemning you. He loves you so much. If, I, if you were the only one on earth, he would still have died. You still have gone to the cross of Calvary. They are that important to him. So if you are here this morning, you either want to surrender to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to him. Please let me just see your hand up. I just want to pray for you. That's all. That is all. We don't want to look for the living among the dead. You know your life is not right. We are in an attitude of prayer. Just put up your hand where you are. All I want is to pray for you. The power of resurrection is available. <laughs> it's available. Tell yourself, I will not be a dead person. I will not be a dead person. If you are really living, if you are sure that you are sure that you are sure, that if Jesus comes today and he says, I want to take my own, you will go with him. Please, let me see your hand up. You are sure that if Jesus comes today, you will go. Let me see your hand up. Please, I am begging you in the name of Jesus. If you could not put your hand up, just come forward. I want to pray with you. Just come forward. Just come forward. We only know today. We don't know tomorrow. Please just come forward. All I want, thank you, my sister. All I want is to pray for you. Finished. 
I won't even ask. No, no, remain standing. Remain standing. If you could not, please just come and join us. You know yourselves. You know. Just come. All I want is to pray for you. I am not even going to ask what went wrong. I won't ask what you did yesterday. I won't ask who you consulted on Saturday night. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come to Jesus. He will forgive you. Just come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please just come. You know the businesses you've been involved in that don't glorify God. But you say, hey, after all, I'm not the only one. Please just come. Just come. And they showed me how to do it. Now it's not me. Just come. You know. Just come. Just come. He's ready to forgive you. Just come. And those of you who have come forward, please just talk to God. Ask him to forgive you. Any other person, you know you are here. We will not look for the living among the dead. That is a very important question that God kept asking. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Everywhere I turned, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you pretending you are living and still living in the congregation of the dead? I am pleading, just come. We only know now. We don't know tomorrow. Now, for those of you who are sure of your salvation, please stretch your hands towards those who are in front and pray for them. Pray that the blood of Jesus will cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Pray that God will forgive them. And those of you who know you should be here, just come and join us. Nobody, I'm not going to ask you what went wrong. All I want is to pray for you so that you can benefit from the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know you should be here. Those of us who are in front, please say this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I acknowledge that I have sinned. Please forgive me, Jesus. Let your blood wash me clean. I invite you, Jesus. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Help me to live a life that pleases you. And help me, Lord, not to be living and yet in the congregation of the dead. Father, any link I have with the congregation of the dead, I command it to be broken now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Remain where you are for now. Please, we have some prayers to pray before. I have one set of people I need to pray for. Please, this prayer is for everybody. And it can only work for you if you are truly the living among the living. Your prayer is, Father, let me enjoy the benefits of your resurrection. Please pray, please pray, please pray. Father, let me enjoy the benefits. You know what benefits you need. Let me enjoy the benefits. You can enjoy all the benefits. Let me enjoy the benefits of your resurrection. Is it hope you have lost? Is it your destiny that has been truncated? Is it stagnation? What is it? Is it dead wombs? What is it? Pray that the Lord will let you enjoy the benefits of, 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 of his resurrection. He rose again to justify your faith. Pray that God will help you to enjoy the benefits of his resurrection. Pray, pray that God will let you enjoy the benefits of your salvation. The benefits of his resurrection. All the benefits, Lord, let me enjoy. Let me not be a Christian in name only. Let it be evident. 
sherebe say that I'm a Christian carry your light. Carry a bakoro bo sherebe sare a bakoro bo she. Let me as a Christian be found in the congregation of the living. Koro bo sherebe sare a ba sherebe si. Koro bo sherebe sare a ba she. I cast off anything that belongs to the kingdom of the dead that wants to stick itself to me. I cast it off in Jesus' name. Pray, brethren, pray. This is a significant day. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now you are going to pray. Father, because Jesus rose again, everything dead in my life, let it come back to life. Let it come back to life. Pray, brethren, pray. Everything that died in your life, is it your dreams? Is it your vision? Is it your business? Is it your finances? Is it your marriage? What is it? What is it that died? What is it that died? Is it the work of your hands? Is it your schooling? Is it your brain? Whatever it is that died, because Jesus rose, the power that rose him from the dead is able to bring that back to life. Father, because Jesus rose, everything that died in my life, let it come back to life. Father, Jesus rose from the dead. They saw him, they felt him, they touched him, they ate with him, they walked with him, they talked with him. Oh, it was evident that he rose because Jesus rose from the dead. Anything and everything that has been dead in my life, dead in the life of any one of your children, Father, let it come back to life now. Let it come back to life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Finally, we will pray as you rose. Jesus, as you rose, let me rise to eternal life on the last day. Please, brethren, pray. Pray. Jesus is coming back again. And he's coming back is soon. I'm still pleading. If you can't pray these prayers, you better come forward. Let me pray for you. Let's pray for you. Sir, that yoke will be broken. Help me, Lord. Jesus Christ, as you rose, keep me to the end and help me to rise with you on the last day. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you that Jesus rose. And because he rose, nothing needs to remain dead in our lives. Father, I thank you for your children who have come forward. You've caused the life of sin to die in their lives. They are rising to new life in you. Even if they had surrendered before, they know that their life is not right. Father, I commit them into your hands. Today, the 31st of March, Easter day, resurrection morning. Lord, let them never go back again in Jesus' name. Whatever shackles it is, they still have with the kingdom of darkness. I command it to be broken now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You can take them away. There's one set of people I want to minister. Please, you can take them to them. Unless any of them, what I'm going to say affects. There are certain things you are struggling with. You are struggling. You need the power, the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead to walk in it. Please come forward. Come forward. I'm not going to ask you what it is. Just come forward. We're going to pray for you. You know what it is you are struggling with. You know. I'm not going to ask you what it is. You know. Please come forward. We'll pray for you. Pastor, please, you'll join me. You know and God knows it. And the same way, the same way, the same way that a power came in and rose Jesus Christ from the dead, the same way, that same power is going to raise you from whatever it is. He's going to sort it out in your life, whatever it is. You've been struggling with something you're struggling with, and you know it, you know it, you know it. Take a moment and talk to God about it. Please talk to God about it. Take a moment and talk to God about it. Take a moment and talk to God about it. We'll, we'll come round and just lay hands on you to agree with you. Okay? Believe God that he's going to do it. If there is a power that could raise Jesus Christ from the dead, that same power is able to break every chain of the enemy over your life in the name of Jesus. Pastor, 
You take a line, I take one line. You take a line, I take a line. Okay. Please give us some worship song.
time is up, please let's rise to pray. I just want to pray. Let's rise. Please let's stand up to pray. Let us stand up. Rise means stand up. Please let us stand up. And if you speak, if it's French, you speak. Leve vos s'il vous plaît. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you. We thank you because you will no longer look for the living among the dead. You will find the living among the living. And Lord, everything concerning the congregation of the dead that had hooked onto the life of anybody. Father, I command, come against it. I cancel it. I destroy it in Jesus' name. Even if they try to do it, it will not work for them. And Father, we thank you for all you have done. Thank you for the souls you saved. Thank you for the lives you've touched. Thank you, Father, for the testimonies that we shall hear henceforth. To you be all the honor and the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May we please stretch our hands towards our mother in the Lord and pray for her. She has poured out from her belly that which the Lord laid on her heart and she has prayed for us, ministered unto us. Father, we pray for your daughter this morning. We pray, Father Lord, that you renew her strength. That every grace, Lord, that she has that has been depleted will be multiplied back unto her in the name of Jesus. We pray that in this new season, as the wind blows, Father, it will blow in her favor. The wind will blow help in her direction. Everything that she needs in terms of people, in terms of resources, Father Lord, you will send her way in the name of Jesus. She will not be weary. She will not be tired. Lord, you will strengthen her. She will arise, Lord, and run, Father Lord, fulfilling that destiny that you have for her. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Can we jam our hands to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords? We're going to take our offering now, but I just want to ask everyone who came forward for prayers, you were given some forms. Please, can you complete those forms? I would have ideally wanted you to have met with Dickness Musonda so she can just talk to you for a few minutes. Can you do that for us? Or have they collected them? Have you completed your forms? The ushers know them. Ushers, have we collected their forms? Okay, thank you. Can we please bring out our offering because we want to pray now. We want to pray over the offering and then we're going to give. You know, the God who loved us so much that he gave his life. And, and, the, and the drama team, thank you so much. Drama team, we're going to pray for you. Not now, after the offering. And I'm going to ask that everyone who participated should come forward in a few minutes. You'll come and we'll pray for you. But for now, we want to pray over our offering. Please just lift up your offering and let's pray over it. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Out of that which you have given to us, we are bringing back to you. Lord, we pray that this money, that it will be used for your glory, that you multiply it for your glory. And we pray that anyone here, Father, who is not able to give, Father, that you will open a door for them. That they will also, Father, that you prosper the work of thy hands and help them so that they're able to give the next time. And for this money, we just bless it for everyone who has given. Multiply it, Father, for your glory and use in Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's living. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 